Arthur uh, is the, uh, I think, prototypical West Coast architect. Uh, he has graced the city with uh, Roy Thompson Hall. He's probably uh, still most famous for Simon Fraser University. And uh, it's been a small but abiding regret of mine that uh, we did not get a new license for a television station in Vancouver because Arthur would have helped us to build it. Yeah. We need it. <laughs> well, Justin had only three hours to make up, <clears throat> and I have eight. I flew in from London this morning, so if, you know, always when you have an assignment, two assignments come at the same time, and it inevitably happens. So I had one last night and this morning, and I had to miss this morning, but I'm here this afternoon. Ah, I only wish I had the exuberance of Justin, but it's wonderful to see that exuberance and drive and faith in the young and what's coming. And I guess I've always had that, but I think uh, I'm not going to talk about architecture at all. It, may, it makes me a little bit sad to talk about it, especially with uh, Roy Thompson Hall, but, but what I'd like to talk about is what I feel is a kind of malaise that we have in Canada, and we don't have enough Justins around to lift that malaise. And I think I've been trying to figure out where that comes from, because I think it's, it's a very serious defect in the country. And I think part of it is that we're still holding on to the ap apron st strings of the monarchy, which is unhealthy. Uh, we're still playing little brother to big brother across the border, which is unhealthy. And we don't seem to accept at certain points in history, and it was really Justin's father, Pierre, that during his time, Canada suddenly lit up and had a purpose, which he made very clear internationally. Uh, and then that was sort of quashed in successive political periods, and unfortunately, we, we seem to have come to the point where nobody cares much about anything. And that's why you have a conference like this, to see if we can get that life and purpose back that we had. I mean, there was no question that the Trudeau years were extraordinary, because he had no fear. He had no uh, unnecessary respect. I think he championed the Commonwealth by s simply sliding down the banister. And he could do, he, he did things that were fixed in people's minds, uh, an image which was really important. It was important to slide down that banister. Uh, really, the issue I want to talk about is that what Canada has to do is something remarkable to get back on its feet to restore its energy, to restore its confidence in itself. And that's what we had with, with Pierre. Uh, at the, for the first time, we had it. Hadn't happened before in history. 
And I was reading uh, a futurist of the, of the um, European Union who said that by 19, sorry, by 2020, there would no longer be any countries in the world. And I agree, that's already happening. And I think that's a very, very important concept. And when you think of it, the 19th century was an era of empires. And why did they fade out? They were no longer necessary. The 20th was an era of countries. And we can see that they are beginning to fade out and are no longer necessary. And what he said by 2020 was that instead of the C7, there would be the, or the G7, there would be the CR39. Now, I don't know what the 39 were, but what he was saying was that city regions were going to be the elements of world gov government. And recently, in the last month, almost every newspaper you take up, some province in Canada is resigning. And was it a week ago that Ontario decided that it really wanted to separate, become part of the states? Um, I don't agree with the issue of the states, because I do think that there is a different background, a different history, a different temperament, and we, I do believe in climatic regions, and I think we're a northern region. <clears throat> our views are Nordic, our restraint is Nordic, all those elements, and I think the States is very Mediterranean. You know, it's as Mediterranean as Italy, from Milan to Sicily. But I do believe that um, what we need to do is separate. And coming from British Columbia, we've endured <coughs> years and years and years of insult and neglect and etc., cetera, etc., cetera, from Central Canada. And, you know, Lister Sinclair former Vancouverite, wrote a wonderful play called We All Hate Toronto. <laughs> and uh, it should still be playing. <laughs> the, but I think the point is that there was a history in Canada, <clears throat> of Upper and Lower Canada, that was very important to this part of the world, but not to the rest of it not to the West. It means nothing to us. Upper and Lower Canada and all that means nothing to us. It hasn't, you know, we don't understand it. We never know who's upper and who's lower, etc. cetera. Uh, so I think we have to recognize that, that we are a country of very well-defined regions whether ethnically, economically, industrially, climatically, whatever. And probably what could invigor invigorate the country more than anything is that we would separate into those regions and then those regions would come together as a federation of regions. And that would be Canadian Federation of, of Regents. So we could act as a, not as a country, but as this other entity. Because we have an enormous amount to give to the world, we all know <coughs> how the rest of the world respects this country, but we need to wake up. And I think in my own 
way, <clears throat> I feel that this is the only way we can wake up. Because British Columbia has all the issues that uh, Quebec has for separating. I mean, we continually. Recently, <clears throat> we had a temporary um, period of prosperity <clears throat> because of the Chinese coming in and bringing money and indus industry and everything else. All sorts of Chinese shipping companies were going to relocate in Vancouver and begin the vision of the expansion of the Pacific. And then Ottawa came down with the um, universal tax and they all left. That was the end of it. Well, any consideration of the impact of that on our economy, which has always sort of fluttered between low and high. <clears throat> and I think the other thing is that it's a very good economic strategy because what you do is you get rid of the provincial government. It becomes absolutely unnecessary in a city region situation. So you don't have to pay for all that bureaucracy. And if you assembled as a country of city regions, or I don't know what we call the Federation of City Regions, you also don't need the federal government. So this becomes a wonderful tactic of saving taxes and money and getting reducing the bureaucracy and everything else. There are a few catches, and that is that we haven't been lucky anywhere with our city, the heads of our city governments. And however, the situation would be diff different if it were a city region, because it is a different basis of power and attraction for anyone to go into it. It's a much more serious task. And if, uh, if then you, you look at that assembly, then you don't need Ottawa. It could become a museum city. <laughs> you relocate your centers of government in the cities. You know, one of the great problems in Vancouver and why it's so ditzy, the government, I mean, is because it's in Victoria. If it were in Vancouver, it would be a much more sensible government. But Victoria is like Disneyland, and therefore <laughs> the behavior is the same. So the idea would also be that instead of having a prime minister, you would um, elect from your city region chairman, the overall chairman of the country, for just a year. And, and you would rotate that, and also you would move parliament every month across the country. So at least the people who were making the decisions about the country knew what country it was they were making decisions about. And, uh, and I think also the most important thing is that you would reduce the power of the federal government um, simply because your prime minister was only going to be there for a year, so he didn't have time to you know, build up his political thing. And you would also reduce the importance of politics. I mean, I've always been very skeptical about politics, 
Because to me, <clears throat> with a non-political mind, whoever says it, it sounds the same. Uh, and there really isn't much difference uh, between one party and another. And there's an awful lot of money and time and everything else wasted in that effort. So if there wasn't quite the challenge or quite the prestige or whatever in, in this limited term, and you'd have to have the political science, scientists study the idea, I'm just throwing this out, because it has worked very well in Switzerland, and in many ways, we're very similar to Switzerland. You can say, well, look, that was a very small country isolated by mountains and things like that. But we have the same problem. We're a very large country, but we're just as isolated one from another through size. And I really believe that we have to do something as courageous as possible, because that's going to be the pattern of the future. You can see every country. You can see what's happening to Europe. It's breaking down into city regions. You can see it in you know, all those areas where there are uh, revolts at the present time. I think the last one to move will probably be the United States until we demonstrate how effective and how contemporary that whole idea is and how important it is for world peace. Because you are breaking the elements down to the smallest uh, um, quantity, the city state or the city region. And I think it's going to happen in China because China already has very, very important centers, economic centers, that are so different from one another, and they all are against Beijing. So it won't take long before something like this, as revolutionary as it may seem, will become a common, of common evidence. Thank you.